Hey friends, and welcome back to our channel. Today's conversation, we are talking about when you go through something that's traumatic, how do you get the support that you really desire in your life? Maybe you have felt unseen or unheard in the event that you've been through in your life. And then there's the question of why is it that people don't check in and offer support? Then this video is for you. We're going to give you multiple ways to get the support that you desire in your life. Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we are The Noble Marriage. We hope that through our channel, you will be inspired and motivated so that your marriage will be all that God created it to be. So I'll start with vulnerability in a safe environment. Just being able to be vulnerable and share what's going on for you in an environment where you feel safe sharing mm -hmm. that. You wouldn't want to share this information with someone who is going to make things worse for you. And so you want to share these things in a safe environment with people. And what that would look like is, hey, this is what I have going on for me. Here's some support that I need from you. Here is uh, my, what's going on in my heart. Things that are very vulnerable to give somebody a glimpse at how they can come alongside you and support you. Well, let's talk about what keeps people from sharing. Because for me, there was a time frame where I did not want to be vulnerable or transparent. Me too. And so what another point is, is you have to let go of what people think about you. And you have to choose your people really wisely. Those are two really important things because what I experienced when I started sharing was I got two polar opposite responses from people. I received a lot of judgment on how I was going about things. And then I also received the kind of support I was really looking for. And the only difference there was I needed to choose the people that I was sharing with more wisely. People that are going to lift me up, pray for me, give me godly truth, speak into me, someone who is for my marriage, for me. And mm. I think we live in a world where people pass so much judgment and specifically around their opinions about how they think you should be handling something like strong opinions too. specifically around betrayal. I heard so many times you need to leave him. He is, you are so much better than that. He is not worthy of you. I mean, just stuff that was very discouraging to me and it was going directly against what God was saying to me. And so it left me in such a conflict. And so one, I had to let go of what are other people going to think about me because they may judge me. It's it, They may do that. And I started picking very carefully who I started sharing with. And then God really like walked me through a process where he wanted me to start sharing publicly. And that was a really big step for me to share openly on social media what was going on in the deepest parts of my life and in my heart. And God may never call you to do that. He called me to do that. And it was a very tough process for me to walk through. But what I really understood is that the more I was vulnerable and authentic about what was really going on for me, I started getting the kind of support that I truly desired, even though it was the hardest part was sharing. I started seeing people reach out saying, me too. Yeah. I'm going through that. Oh my gosh, you're helping me with what you're talking about. I'm, I'm in the thick of it. I also got, girl, I am on the other side of this and there is hope for you and you can get through this. I got through it so you can do it. So I was receiving different kinds of support that I was not really prepared for. And I was someone who really wanted to go into isolation mm. because of what other people think about me. I was very much a perfectionist and perfectionism drove every action that I took. And I'm about to share 
some things that have happened in our relationship that are far from a perfect life. And that was just really challenging for me. What I had to understand and really see for myself is I am not the only one struggling in life. Oh, that's good, yeah. I mean, here I am trying to put my fig leaves on, which we love this. We got this from one of our subscribers and friends, you know, leave your fig leaves at the door because that's what we're doing. Perfectionism is just putting fig leaves all over us to cover up what's really going on underneath. And I had to start letting those fig leaves down and I had to show people the real and the ugly that was going on in my life in order to receive the support that I needed. And while I was in isolation dealing with, I'm not perfect and people are gonna know I'm not perfect now and they're gonna think that I'm not good enough and all these things, mm. I had to get that one, that spiritual warfare, keeping me from being in community because being in community is so powerful when you're going through a really tough circumstance. And two, that, um, you know, everybody else is struggling too. There are so many people out there struggling. And when I really got that I am just like everybody else, yours might be a different flavor than mine, right. but it's the same thing. And yours might be a different flavor, but it's the same thing. We're struggling and it's because we live on this earth. And so when we can surround That's ourselves right. with people that are going to lift us up and speak into us and speak truth to us, you can heal so much faster when you have that kind of support that you really need. Speaking of what do people think about me, uh, I've lived my life trying to do one of two things. I want to look good and I want to avoid looking bad. And what lies underneath those is I'm really concerned about what people think about me. And it's not just Travis, you do it too. <laughs> and 7.5 billion other people are all concerned and walking around wondering what do people think about me when in reality, everybody's thinking about themselves, thinking about other people. Right. All the time. And so I had this vision that God gave me that I am on a stage. This vision, by the way, completely changed the way that uh, I am called to speak out to people. Me too. It changed the way because I am also called to speak on a, pla a public platform about my testimony, but I had a hard time doing it. I did not want to speak in public. I did not want to be on YouTube. Mm -mm. <laughs> and this set me free. So I had this vision. I'm on stage and I'm looking out at a large crowd of thousands of people and the spotlight is on me. And I'm kind of curious, like, what is it I'm supposed to be doing here? Am I supposed to be singing, dancing, speaking, you know, doing some type of talk? And I don't know, but I feel judgment from everyone in the audience. They are all staring at me and they all have this judgmental look. And I'm like, they're just judging me and I don't know what to do. And I felt so small, so little and like ineffective. Do you ever experience that? Do you ever experience that when you're asked to speak in front of someone, the very similar uh, feelings? This other light came down on top of me and I started, I started like raising up into the sky. I probably went about 70, 80 feet. And I'm now I am overlooking this stage and all these people. And I see them completely different now. I don't see judgment. I see pain. I see them from a different perspective up there. And what I thought was judgment was actually internal pain that all these people are experiencing and that they just don't know how to process or deal with. And then this voice is speaking in my ear and it was Jesus. And he was like, what are you doing down there? Because I am a believer in Jesus, which means I'm not part of this world. I am part of eternity with God, and I am here passing through. And God has called me to something different. God has called me not to be there. And so he's like, what are you doing down there? I didn't call you there. I called you to something bigger. 
And that's a different perspective. I now see it from a different perspective of, it's not that they have judgment toward me. It's not that the 7.5 billion people on this planet are judging me. It's just that we're all in pain and we're all processing it and dealing with it from a different way. And so it relieved me and it took away from me that uh, overwhelming pressure that I was feeling speaking about myself to other people. And it just, I have the ability to freely talk now. The other thing that kept me from sharing was shame. Mm. I felt so much shame about what he did because I made it mean something about me. And for me, it was, I made it mean I'm not good enough and I never will be. And I didn't want people to know that about me. That was way too shameful. And when he started sharing, at first, it really bothered me. It bothered me that he's out there being vulnerable and sharing with people your experience of getting freedom around betrayal and infidelity and how that has just set you free. And it kind of made me angry in the beginning of, I'm not ready. What are you doing out there sharing all right. of our personal things? Right. And I am hurting over here. And so God just really gracefully shifted my perspective on that of why wouldn't I want him to be in freedom? Like, why wouldn't I want him to be walking in no shame around his actions and what he did in full forgiveness? And it took me some time to really let that process and soak in and really see him for your <clears throat> sharing is such a blessing to other people. Hmm. And while I wasn't there yet, I was able to see that you were making an impact in other people's lives through sharing. And it just told me that the transformation that I had seen in him was real. And that was so huge for me. And so I started to shift my perspective of if he can share, I can too. And I'll get there eventually. And now here we are sharing all over YouTube, all of our personal events that have happened in our life. And it's just been such a beautiful process because now the support that we have is absolutely incredible. And we have so many people that I could call who would put down everything they're up to, to stop and listen to me and what I have going on for me. And I didn't have that before. I was introverted. I didn't have many friends. I certainly didn't talk about my personal life to anyone. And so when I started doing that, I started to see a shift in how people were responding around me. And so it's not necessarily that people don't want to support you. It's who are you showing up to be that people are not supporting you? Mm. Because if I am closed off and I'm in isolation and I have shame around what's happened, people are not going to know what to do. Nope. They're not going to know what to say to me how to approach me is saying something going to bring up a lot of emotion. It, it's too scary for people. And that is the reason yeah. people don't check in. That's the reason people don't offer support is it's awkward. I know so many times where I have had friends lose a loved one in their life. And because of lack of knowing how to respond, I just didn't, I never said anything or I said very little. And that was not because I didn't care. It was because it's uncomfortable. It's scary for people. And then you're talking about betrayal, infidelity. That's something people just don't know how to support you on. And so yeah. the more vulnerable you are and the more you share about what's going on, people actually get insight of what's going on for you, that they have insight. I can support her by praying. I can support her by checking in and just seeing how are you doing today? All kinds of things will come to their mind through vulnerability. You may not feel seen by your loved ones. And I just wanted to share with you that you are important and your heart does matter. And sometimes it seems like they don't know what to say. So they kind of isolate from you or they don't engage with you, but it has nothing to do with the value that they feel in you. They just honestly don't know what to say. 
but we don't want to skip your heart because you are important. Yeah. And I think one of the important things around that is telling people what you need because they don't know. Yeah. And I specifically remember asking a few friends because they were like, what do you need? I don't even know what to, how to help. And I want to help. And I'm like, I need prayer. That is what I need. I need you to check in on me and just see how my thoughts are doing. Mm. I need you to send me devotionals when, when the Holy Spirit lays them on your heart. You know, I am the only one that truly knows what I need. And if I don't express that with people, how are they going to know? Right. They are not right. mind readers and most likely they've never been through what you're walking through. And so without that relatability there, there is a barrier. And the only way to get over it is by just offering up, hey, I really need your love and support during this time. And I just need you to ask me how I'm doing. Is that something that you can do for me? And you will be so surprised how many people are like, yes, I can, I can do that. Thank you so much for telling me what you need because I just don't know how to support you. I'm thinking of prayer and there's a lot of different facets we can use with prayer, but immediately I'm thinking one is I want to pray to God and ask God to give me wisdom, to give me discernment, to give me like, what is it I should be asking for, for support? What uh, people should I be including in this, in my life? And what uh, team can I create? Like, God, give me that wisdom and tell me who it is I should be speaking to about these things. So prayer is extremely important for just asking for the clarity of yourself. Another thing with prayer is spiritual warfare. Like, why would this not be a place the enemy would just go and attack? This is such a great opportunity for the, the enemy to attack your life through your thoughts, through uh, maybe some fears of I'm not good enough and isolation, like you mentioned. There's so many things that the enemy is going to implant that's going to try to take you out. Mm -hmm. And so specifically praying over spiritual warfare, cancel the, in, the, cancel the plans the enemy has in your life bind up the spirit of lies and confusion that may be going on inside of you, Re rebuke the plans that the enemy has and Satan has in your life in the name of Jesus. And I recommend doing that out loud and get that spiritual warfare, put it in its place where it belongs, which is not in your mind. Yeah. And another thing that I really prayed for because I didn't have support when I first found out was please bring me people. Please send me people that are going to help me through this. And he did. First of all, I went immediately to my therapist and that was the only person that I had. And she was so valuable to me during that time. But then I started having people come into my life who have been through betrayal that were in my life before. And I knew it was a direct answer from God of here is somebody that I'm giving you to help you through this and give you hope to know that you're gonna get to the other side. And so look for that community, yeah. look for people who have walked this journey, who are safely on the other side and in a better place. Don't surround yourself with people walk, who have walked this journey and quit and gave up and um, people who are going to speak lies and yeah. death over and your marriage. Bitterness breeds bitterness. So if you go associate yourself with someone who's bitter, you're going to be bitter walking through this bitterly. Yes. That's good. Yeah, you really want to surround yourself with people who have you and your life and your marriage in their best interest. So here's a little recap of the ways that you can get support from others. Vulnerability in a safe environment. Letting go of what others think about you. Choosing your people wisely in community and surrounding yourself with people who are on the other side of this. Asking for prayer, not only for yourself, but for wisdom and guidance and to send you the people that you need. And also against spiritual warfare. Using transparency and authenticity to take those fig leaves off so that people can really see what you're going through and avoid isolation because 
Isolation is where the enemy has free reign in your life. So you are important. And these are ways that you can get support in your life. Because when you get support, the healing can happen faster in your life. Yes. You can be seen and you can process through life so much quicker and easier. And validation. If, you're, if you've been watching our videos and you're really relating to our story and what we've walked through, it validates what you're going through. It validates the feelings you're having, the emotions that are coming. And so by surrounding yourself like that, it just really helps you get validated. And I'm normal. I'm not crazy. I'm not losing my mind here. So it's just so important. I would love for you to put in the comments some ways that you got support mm -hmm. going through a tough time. By sharing in the comments below, it allows for more people to get healing and support. So thank you so much for your comments. We love them and, and they mean so much to us. If you haven't subscribed already to our channel, go ahead and do What's that. What's wrong with you? Hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't noticed, we always post our premieres that are coming up in the weeks ahead. And what's so great about that is you can already see the topics that are going to come out. So go hit that alarm, set a reminder so that it sends you a message, let you know, hey, the video you wanna see is coming out today. We hope this video brought you value and we'll see you next time. One more thing, here's what's coming up next week. We are headed to Asheville, North Carolina for a what is it? family life weekend to remember in Asheville and I am pumped. And it's going to be the whole weekend where we get to uh, just disconnect from our life, disconnect. What marriage retreats have done for our marriage is we were a hot mess, <laughs> yeah. to say the least. And when we started going, we started picking up little tools here and there so that we could start actually making a difference in our marriage. What we've talked about is if you're just making a 1% change, the trajectory of that is really large. Mm -hmm. and so, Good morning. Good morning. It's Saturday morning. It's about 7.30. We have to be in class at night. At night. I, I realized I forgot to pack clothes for tomorrow. <laughs> We always forget something on our trip. She has forgot her underwear. I have forgot my clothes. Uh, Thanks for watching our channel, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye. You you may not feel seen by these people. You may not. not. Another thing for prayer is spiritual warfare. This is such a prime. We hope this video brought you value, and we'll see you next time. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Here's what's coming up next week. Oh, yeah, I got this. One more thing.